Yes. <laughs> I was a golden gopher. That's my animal. <laughs> I know we're not welcome here in Iowa, but I'm glad I've been welcomed here in Iowa. In 1983, the Denver Broncos made the playoffs for the first time in a long time. It had been five years, and I grew up in Minnesota. And in Minnesota, and I'm sure there's some Viking fans here, but in Minnesota, when the Vikings make the playoffs, this thing happens. This, uh, you get this, this pain in your stomach and this, this lump in your throat. It's like, oh, God, here we go again, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's, uh, that's the way it was. But in Denver, people go crazy. They were painting their houses orange. There's a whole generation of children named John Elway Wilson or John Elway Smith. So the Mu Museum of Natural History decided to take advantage of this insanity about the Broncos and hold a pep rally. And they called down to the Broncos, and the Broncos assigned myself and, and our old running back, a guy named Sammy Winder, to go down and speak at this thing. And, and I'd never gotten up in front of a group to speak before, and that's nerve-wracking. That's, that's a scary thing. But I'd done a lot of new things that year. I got my first new car that year. I got a, got a Trans Am with T-Tufts. Ooh, right? <laughs> I thought I was Smokey and the Bandit. That was me. I got married that year. I got my first real job that year, if you count football as a real job. So I figured I'd try it. Uh, and as I got down to the museum, do you have a museum of natural history here? Or how many of you have been to a museum of natural history? Most of you have. If you haven't, you've probably seen that movie, Night at the Museum, right? Well, the, the one in Denver is very typical, except there's all these one-way streets by it, and they were going the wrong way that day as I drove up. So as I walked in, uh, Sammy and the lady in charge of the pep rally were already headed down to where this, this meeting was to be held, and they'd given up on me. And I hurried up, caught up with Sammy, and asked him what was going to happen, and he explained it to me like this. He said, Carl, first I'll get up. I'll talk about the offense. Then you get up. You talk about the defense, and we're playing the Seahawks. So, th so this lady here is going to hand us a Seahawk, and we're supposed to tear it up. I figured I could do that. I was nervous now. It's a scary thing to get up and speak, but, but I got to the room and everyone was wearing orange. They had their orange jerseys on, their orange hats, their pom-poms, their foam fingers. They had the whole thing going, and I went in there, and Sammy got up and did a wonderful job. He talked about how John Elway was going to throw the ball and how he was going to run it and how many points they were going to score, and the, the fans are getting excited. I'm thinking, hey, this is okay. I could probably do this. So then it's my turn, and nervous, sweating, scared. I got up, and I talked about how. Rulon Jones and myself were going to sack the quarterback, and Louie Wright and Steve Foley intercept the ball, and Tom Jackson and Randy Gratishire tackle their running backs, and the fans are getting more excited, and I'm thinking, hey, I can do this. This is cool. So then it's time for the Seahawks. So the lady takes this bird. It's a taxidermied bird and hands it to Sammy. Sammy holds it up over his head and says, Carl, you're the defensive player. You tear it up and give me this thing. Now, if you've been to the Museum of Natural History, if you've seen that movie, you've seen the diorama. It's a glass box, and inside that is the featured animal and also the whole environment that animal lives in, the brush, the grasses, right down to the, the crickets and the ants. It looks very lifelike, like it's going to come to life at night. This bird didn't look anything like that. This bird's wings were pinned to its side. It had feathers sticking out all over the place. It felt kind of crunchy in my hands. I figured they don't need this thing. And it's not that big a crowd. I mean, there's maybe 30 people in the room, but, but I held that thing up, and I, and I said, this is what we're going to do, the Seahawks. And I told you I'm from Minnesota, right? In Minnesota, if someone says, tear it up, they mean tear it up, right? Sammy had told me, that's what we're going to do is tear this thing up. So, so I, ripped the, the, I ripped the thing in half. Feathers are flying everywhere. I throw the half with no head attached to the ground. I tear the head off the other half. I, I throw it out in the crowd. The crowd's going crazy. I'm thinking, I love public speaking. This is for me. <laughs> but there was something I didn't know. The Seahawk was actually, was actually an osprey. It was part of an ongoing study of the osprey species where they collected one each and every year. And this particular osprey, this crunchy osprey that was spread on the ground before me had been collected in 1910. <laughs> I saw that lady standing there. She, she had her head in her hands. She couldn't believe what I'd just done. I got hate mail from the Audubon Society. <laughs> my, family, my family lived in Washington, D.C. My mom read about it in USA Today. That was an interesting phone call home from mom. 
As I'm leaving the museum, they're announcing, whoever caught the head of the Seahawk, please bring it back. You'll get free passes to the IMAX theater. <laughs> That's the courage to try new things, even though they might go terribly wrong. But sometimes they do. That's why it's hard to try new things. But the fact of the matter is, if you're here today, and you're hearing us speakers, and you're exposed to the to the exhibits out there, and, and you've got the networking opportunity, it's a waste of time if you don't leave here today without trying something new, without stepping outside your comfort zone. That's why we're all here. It's fun to come to the meetings and drink coffee and eat the little jelly-filled thingies they've got and do all that, you know. But, but really, that's why you're here. You've got to have the courage to try new things, and, and it doesn't always go wrong. I mean, I never played linebacker in my life until my third year in the NFL. I was a lineman. Some coach way back in Pop Warner said, Mecklenburg, you're a big kid, you're a lineman. That's what I was. I was a lineman in high school and college. They drafted me as a lineman. I'm number 77. That's not a linebacker's number. But in my third year, the coaches came to me and said, Carl, Carl, we think you can help the team more if you switch to linebacker. Never done it before in my life, and it's a very different job. I thought I'd give it a shot. Went to practice as a linebacker. Went to meetings as a linebacker. Went to training camp as a linebacker. When got to game time, I was a third down pass rusher and a special teams player like I was the first three years. But then the 10th game of that year, our starter got hurt and I got to play. And it was against the Oakland Raiders, biggest game of the year for us. It was at Mile High Stadium, and I was going to play. I never stepped on the field in a real game as a linebacker before. And I got out there, and things were happening really fast, but I worked at it. I was ready to go. I started making plays, and I actually had a big hit in that game that they still show on highlight films. I hit Marcus Allen and knocked him out. The Fox television program, the Fox Sports List, listed it as one of the top ten hits in NFL history. I didn't even know what I was doing yet, but I was a linebacker. That's who I was. It was there inside of me, and unless I had had the courage to try something new, I never could have found that out. Change is inevitable. It's going to happen. I used to, I used to play for a guy named Dan Reeves. Dan was our head coach for years, and, and Dan would call us all together when we, 